Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and it's time for another Blender video tutorial and I'm pretty glad because we now have in version 2.64 it's up and it's great great version we have lots of things added in and you should of course move over to blender.org and get it if you don't already got it and for this video tutorial we'll be using cycles and a nice little technique to build our scene and I also think it'll be easy even for those who are not uh, familiar with how Blender works and uh, we'll use simple stuff first of all I'll hit the X key to delete the default cube and I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad and 5 to switch to front author view now I'll take a look at the grease pencil options here let's move over to the line and you can see that the shortcut is Control and D so we'll just uh, hold Control and D and click and drag to create some lines here in the front author view and let's try to create some you know some parallel lines some intersecting lines and feel free to create a lot of them and as you can see all I do is holding down control D clicking and dragging and trying to create some sort of interesting shape here and move over here click and drag again click and drag and I don't like this one control Z control D click and drag okay and control D click and drag and then create some diagonal lines as well and all we do here is to create a nice variation of shapes and the good thing about this tutorial is that whenever you try to build a similar scene to this one you'll pretty much always end up having different results and I pretty much love this when it happens in a video tutorial and again clicking and dragging and what I want here is to have a nice balance between having way too many lines and by uh, inserting way too many lines here we'll be having uh, some big redden times because we'll be using blade cycles and we'll see later on why and on the other hand I also don't want this one to be empty I want it to be filled with lines to be filled with yeah with some variation here just to create an interesting result that we will like later on so again control D click and drag create your lines click and drag and some more let's say right about here and let's click and drag okay let's stop at about here I'm pretty sure that if you like this technique and you want to create your own scene you can add more you can create all sorts of shapes but I think we're good for now I'll hit the N key for the side panel here and move over to the mm, grease pencil settings and I'll just click convert and convert my grease pencil to path now moving over to the uh, spline to the path options here to the object data for the uh, spline and what I'll do now in order to see my spline I'll change the extrude value here from 0 to 0 0.1 and you can now see that we're getting something. We have some geometry here for our object. 
What I'll also do is uh, add a modifier to my object here, click add modifier, of course move over to the modifiers panel and click add modifier and I'll add a solidify modifier. Let's increase the thickness, let's set it up to, let's set it up to about 5, ok. And again I really think we have way too, uh, too few lines here and as I said before feel free to add some more to create an even more interesting result for your final render. I'll move over to the uh, object data here for my spline, for my path and I'll set the extrude value here from 0 0.1 to 0 0.03 or 4. Let's make our lines here thinner and I'm back to the modifiers and as you can see here we have the offset set to minus 1 I'll set this one to 0 and this brings the parts here together let's set it back to minus 1 so we can see now when we create when we were creating these lines here as you can see we were getting some uh, weird normals some uh, opposite moving normals so we have some of the lines moving back and some of them moving at the front and that creates an interesting result and again by setting the offset to 0 you can see that we now have them all together ok now this looks pretty interesting and we'll be using the offset here to animate our object so while my cursor is over the offset value I'll hit the I key to insert a keyframe and I'll split my 3D view here for a while and I'll need a graph editor ok now we have the offset here selected and I'll hit the N key for the properties and move over to the modifiers and click add modifier and I'll add a noise modifier so for the noise modifier here and we have the scale and strength I'll bring the scale uh, value up so that we won't be having uh, a super fast animation for our object. I'll set it to 5 and what I want to do here with this, with this strength and as I said before the offset can be set down to minus 1 and up to 1. So I want the noise here, the uh, waveform here for my noise to move up to 1. You can see 1 is here and to move down to minus 1. So I'll increase the strength until my curve here touches the uh, positive and the negative one. And let's set it at about 2 point, let's say 2.8. Ok. Pretty nice. Now if we move over to the 3D view and hit... Why do I keep hitting P? Ok, let's hit play. To see, you can see that we have the parts here following the noise and the offset here creates an interesting motion with the noise modifier. Now I'll hit pause and move back to uh, the first frame and I have the object selected again and I'll hit the I key to insert a rotation keyframe for the first frame and move to 180 to frame 180 and I'll hit R and Z to rotate my object on the Z axis and rotate it for 180 degrees on the Z axis. And now I'll hit the I key again to insert another rotation keyframe. Now back to our graph editor we have the let's expand the rotation options here. We'll first of all delete the X and Y rotation. I'm selecting them and hitting X to delete them. And we'll only keep the Z rotation because we of course rotate our object in the Z axis and what I'll do now here for my curve is move over to key interpolation mode and change it to linear alright now I'll expand my 3D view and I'll now try to position my camera let's set it at about here I'll hit Control alt 0 to frame my camera and select this frame right here to select the camera 
let's move it away from the object let's take some space at about here and here so let's set the X to 15 the Y to 11 and the Z value here to 0 0.5 I'll set the X rotation to 88 and let's set the Z rotation here to 50 alright and now I'll add some rotation on the Y axis as well trying to create a nice uh, interesting result here an interesting angle for my camera and I'll move over to the camera options and change the focal length from 35 let's change it to 30 or perhaps 25 okay now you see what we're getting and again we have some animation here I'm moving over to the render options and change the end frame set it to 180 and move back to frame 1 and hit play and you can see what we get here so that's pretty interesting and next thing I'm going to do is change the blender render to the cyclist render and let's change the world uh, options a bit move over to the world tab click this little icon for the surface here click use nodes and let's add a color let's add some color actually let's move it at about here or perhaps a bit more blue all right and the strength is set to 1 we might work with the strength later on and I'll hit 7 on my mirror keypad let's grab the lamp here right mouse button click to select it and I'll hit the G key to grab it move it at about here alright okay and I think we're good now zero again on my mirror keypad for the camera perspective view select the object right mouse button click to select it and let's add the material to the object as well. I'll click new and for the surface change it to glass PSDF. So this looks good. I'm going to change the color, make it slightly orange for my glass here, slightly from to orange or red. And I change the roughness here, add just a tiny bit of roughness. I'll set it to 0 0.05. Okay. Now back to the render options and I'll just bring up the samples here for the cyclist render and I'll change the render samples from 10 to 100. Okay. Now let's render an image to see how it looks. And I think it looks pretty nice. Now I'll hit the escape key take some more distance from my uh, object here let's set the Y here to minus 12 and the X to 17 ok set the Z rotation to 51 and I'll also move over to the camera options and bring the focal length down to 23 alright and I'll also change the world color. Let's make it a bit more blue. Okay. Let's render another image. So this is it. You can always increase the samples here for the render to have a better result. And we'll be rendering an animation for this one. And as I said before, I uh, took just a bit of time creating the lines in the grease layer pens in the grease pencil layer. So uh, if you spend some more time into creating the lines here, you'll be having a lot more interesting result. And of course, I'll be rendering this one and rendering a more complicated example for you to see. So this is our video tutorial. I hope you liked it. It was, I believe, it was pretty easy stuff to follow, and again, it looks pretty nice thanks to the cyclist render. And now I'll hit the Escape key and let's save this one. 
file save as and let's save this one as random cycles and as I always say feel free to experiment you can use different settings for my uh, for our object here you can also set it to let's set it to diffuse let's see how it looks and render an image and you can try all sorts of uh, illumination settings and you can also add a plane or something to add some more light to your scene so feel free to experiment and this is it and thanks for watching